microdose, yeah, microdose, 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 dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose. What's good, y'all? Coach Ace here coming to you. Black Friday edition of the Microdose. Hope you guys have had fantastic Thanksgiving. Those that don't celebrate Thanksgiving, hope you're having a great day anyways. Hope you are uh, still got to eat some turkey or spend time with your loved ones or spend time with friends that you haven't seen in forever. I know that um, we had a near tragedy in the Bosnet family recently, but it, it was an opportunity that was needed. We're like friends from across the world who haven't talked to each other in years. Finally reconnected. And while it was brief, it was still nice. We got a brand new show on today and um, got two, two guests for the price of one, kids. They are representing the 19th edition of another Hole in the Head Festival here in San Francisco. It uh, passes the lowest $40. You can get an on-demand library uh, for $125 or do the whole thing for $160. Bucks. More information can be found at anotherholeintheheadcom or ahith.com. Please welcome, guys, Eric Ringer. George Cascanlon. What's good, guys? George, I think I butchered your last name there, but talk to me. Hey, uh, thanks for having us on. Um, yes. Thanks yeah. For being Eric and I have been uh, friends since, uh, I guess, grade school, right? What? Was it kindergarten? Kindergarten? What, 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 first grade? What was that? I think it was first grade we met. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, so we've been friends for a, a while. We, uh, we started this in, what, 2004? Yeah, it was 2004. Yeah, and uh, it's been going on strong for uh 19 years it keeps on growing we have what was the genesis uh, of this out, festival what started it what started it was uh my friend uh, uh jeff ross he was putting <laughs> on his film festival at sf indie fest i don't know what year it was then but i approached him and i asked him uh, i wanted to do a, a horror sci-fi film festival and he uh he helped me out uh well he helped both of us out and he we found the space he helped us book it and he was helping us with the email and uh in 2004, he walked us through on how to do this. Because I think at that time, he was on his eighth year. And after that, we uh, it's been going strong. But that it was pretty much just because I loved horror films. And I always wanted to uh, have an audience for it and see how the crowd would react. But then from that, it just turned into something else. Now it's more, um, I want filmmakers to, sh- to get a place to show their films and um, get a chance to sort of like YouTube or online. I want them to actually, you know, have a some kind of a, even a, a live online presence or at the theater. You know, a lot you've of had programs. the uh, the kids from the uh, unnamed footage festival come on all the time. And what happened after their second event, I want to say, is all of a sudden filmmakers started making content specifically for their their event. Oh. I, I, have you found that happening over the nineteen years? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There, um, there have been definitely a lot of short, uh, mostly short films. But they have okay. been, uh, they have been, throughout the years. They've been making um, films uh, because of us and for us. So it's actually a uh, yeah, a lot of films, even features. I have a friend uh, Hassan. He always uh, he makes these feature films, and we always play them. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I like the unnamed uh, film festival uh, group. They're uh, they're good guys. They have a yeah, they're they have a, a good following. This event starts December 1st all the way to the 18th. But how far out do you have to start booking stuff to, to fill this program? We start, um, we start going over films in January. Wow, full year out. Yeah, it takes, a, it takes a long time to put this thing together. It takes a year, pretty much. Uh, there's people submit through Film Freeway and, or people contact us directly mm-hmm. from uh, people who've actually played uh, before, alumni. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it takes a while to put this thing together. We have we usually screen over 250 films. Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. I had the uh, privilege this- last year of being a judge for Iron Dragon TV's Action Fest, and we went through Film Freeway. And you know, there's you know kung fu movies there and small indie docs, and you know the, But then there's like someone just put up an original composition. Someone put up just an outline draft, and I was like, I, I don't know what, what like money was spent on this. Like, why did you submit this? This is not what is in the context <laughs> of anything. You're like, have you found anything weird like that? I mean, you have to have. Well, we, we used to all the time, and that's why we changed the festival up a little bit. We okay. opened it up to, to more now. Before it used to be just strictly horror and sci-fi. 
but then more people started submitting like doc random documentaries or dramas and so we just started opening it up and uh, having different categories and uh, just playing everything now. If it's good and we like it, we're going to play it. Yeah. I mean, many... if, if, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. It's been good in our opinion. All films are good. It, yeah. it takes, I, I have more, I have respect for filmmakers now because it's, hmm. it takes a long, it takes a lot to put, to make a, a movie. There's a lot of time, a lot of effort and every, all films are good in my I opinion. Agree. Um, I can't agree with that statement, but all films are hard to make. So I, I appreciate that at least. Uh, some, some of them still turn out to be a flop. Um, they had yeah. uh, at, at uh, the fifth edition of UFF this year, they had one movie that took 11 years to create. And I was like, this is just, oh, this is just a bag of sand, man. Like, I, I'm not digging this. But then another guy from Mexico took three weeks and a, and a 360 degree camera. And the thing was fucking incredible. I was like, yeah. the most, like the story is strong. Like, I don't know why we have this paranormal thing here, but like the visuals are intense. Like, I can't think that all, all movies are good, but they are all definitely not easy to make. So, so, have you made a movie before? I was a part of a, a Len Kapazinski film last October. And then other than that, you know, a, a 48 hour film project is one time I did that. That was a good time. So yeah, I've, I've been on sets. I do a live event production. So my toes get wet. But yeah, it's a uh, I know it's, it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. How deep is the team at another hole in the head? There's a uh, six. So there's Eric and I. There's mm -hmm. Romany, Benji and uh, Jeff Ross. So there's, there's five of us. This is not comedian Jeff Ross. This is another Jeff Ross. That's another Jeff Ross. He runs SF. Uh, he runs SF Indie Fest. So he's he's right. part of the team as well. Oh so yeah, it's uh it takes and then we have a, plus we have a lot of volunteers too to help out help us out throughout the, uh, during the festival and they're part of the team as well. It's um it takes a lot to especially to put two hundred fifty films together. It's uh we I mean I think I what think is the screening process like for that? Got to watch the whole thing. I watched. So we we just. I guess there's five of us. Uh, well, four of us watching the films. Oh no, we actually have two other uh, screeners that watch the films, and um, we watch them. And then we label them, and then we actually put notes in it, and then we uh, we say if we like it or not, and then we come back to the ones that we like, and then we go over those again. So it, it takes about three to four times to watch rewatch these films that are good oh that we like, and then make a choice at the end. Do you guys get together for, for these viewings or is it all just like everyone's on their own? Please, everybody's please on. give me your list by Friday. Everybody's on their own. We go through film freeway. So it's everything's, uh, we can just log in and see everything there. The people's mm -hmm. notes and, uh, what they've watched and, uh, what they've liked. And then we just go from there. And then at the end, we, uh, we all come together and we go over it and decide what we want to play and, well, we can play. We can't. I mean, we can't play everything. So mm -hmm. we play the most, well, whatever we can. Yeah. I was going through your program and a couple titles stuck out to me. That was like, oh, man, I wish I could get to that. Nigh the Living Dead with a live score. That sounds exciting. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's, that's uh, we've been working with them, uh, I think, like three years now and uh, four years probably. And uh so the the band's called Sleep Bomb. They're more of like a kind of like a heavy metal uh, death grunge kind of a band. And uh, what they do is they, uh, I guess, a couple of years ago we did Conan the Barbarian. Oh, sure. And so the the uh, they they remove all the audio mm -hmm. from the film, but the not the audio the 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 soundtrack. The mm -hmm. audio is still in there, and they okay. play their own score live at the theater while the film's playing. It's really incredible. You all, whenever we play it, the shows sell out. We play, I guess, Nos, I think it was a Nosferatu, the Conan, and now we're doing uh, Night of the Living Dead. And this is going to be their uh, their first uh, show of do, of doing this. They they've been writing this during the pandemic. Wow! And now they now we're going to premiere it at our festival. We already sold a hundred tickets to that show. It's uh, pretty good, and it's still. I think we might sell out. We'll see, but it's, uh, they're really happy to playing at the Roxy. We played the the other shows. We played right at New People Cinema, which hold like a 
a hundred seats. This one sold, holds two twenty. So people at the Roxy are excited about the show as well. We're getting a lot of buzz. Nice. Like, again, like it sounds really cool, man. Like, is it, it so? Is, is it is it an actual like mini orchestra or is it a band or just? It's a uh, band. There's drums, bass, synthesizer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, four or five guys. Folks, you have to check really that cool. out. Tickets available at a h i t h dot com. Again, passes as low as forty dollars, or go crazy, get the all access for one hundred and sixty bucks. Uh, another movie that I thought looked interesting: Living with Chucky, documentary about uh, folks who worked on the Child's Play movies. Um, how good is this? I actually really like that. <laughs> I thought this was really good. This is uh, it's played at a, a bunch of festivals like Fantasia. Uh, I think it played at uh, what's the one in Toronto? Toronto After Dark. Oh, wow. um, yeah, yeah. It's about this uh, girl who uh, pretty much her dad worked on the movie, and then she got to work with it during all the child's plays, and they, you know, did a lot of the special effects and stuff. So uh, okay. yeah, it's actually it's a good uh, documentary. Is this now? Is this following the actors or the actual like prop masters? It's following. Yeah, this more behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's not. That's really gonna be cool because there's a lot of like that first child's play. There's a lot of fun, forced perspective shots. We're like, okay, this is obviously a model. Then, oh my god, that's just a midget in a wig. Wow, they, they, they went for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the child's play series. I haven't seen any of the TV shows, but I like like what they did with the new reboot where they actually like brought in Brad Dorf's daughter to take on the the next mantle of Chucky. I don't again. I don't know if they're doing that in the TV show, but. They, they touch they, on any of that? No, not in the documentary. It's more of the original movies. Okay. They haven't okay. touched about the TV show and stuff. Twilight Zone Live, playing exclusively on December 14th and 15th. This thing sounds off the wall. I, I'm a huge fan of the Twilight Zone. Last Black Friday, I uh, shelled out 50 bucks to get the box set. And trying to go through it, I realized that like while I've seen as many Twilight Zone episodes as I have, those marathons have only shown me like the top 50 and there's like 200 more that I've never even, even thought about what, what can we expect from twilight zone live? Yeah. These, uh, this crew, dream, uh, it's, it's a, uh, theater, a theater group dream on the uh, dreams on the rocks. And they've been doing these uh, little twilight zone shows here in the city. One of my friends uh, told me about them. So I approached them and I asked them if they would like to be part of the festival and they were excited and um, yeah, we uh, were. It's going to take place at Stageworks. It's like a seventy-seat theater, and they're going all out. There's going to be a light. There's going to be light shows, uh, uh, smoke, smoke machines, a lot of sound effects, maybe even some smell of vision or smell of oh, no. theater. I don't know something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I hope not. But, that, again, but yeah, that's, been, that's the immersive experience, guys, and you—that's why you need to buy tickets and support this festival because they're putting on dope yeah, ass projects one, uh, like this. this. Doing really well. Yeah, this one will sell out. Uh, tickets are. Uh, this is on uh, December fourteenth and the fifteenth. There's two shows, and um, each night will there'll be two episodes. The first episode is a uh, Eye of the Beholder, and the second one will be a uh, Nightmare as a Child. Let's yeah, let's sure, focus on the uh, on demand platform of the festival this year. How many? How often have you guys been doing on demand content? Uh, this started in um, twenty twenty, so two 20. years. This is our third year doing it. Yes, yeah, the third year. I mean, we had no choice. We uh, we took the, the all the theaters were closed mm-hmm. in twenty twenty. So we, uh, we there was no live theater. We we went uh, we went through eventive. And actually worked out great. In 2021, we did a hybrid, a little bit, uh, not that many uh, the, uh, theater shows, some theater shows, but because of the pandemic and eventive. But now this year, we're doing both, and we're doing Zoom too, Zoom live shows, and the, all the. It's actually really great that because a lot of filmmakers can't attend the festival, and a lot of uh, attendees can't you know, fly out to San Francisco to experience the festival. So they, um, we do really well on the uh, on-demand part of it. And we also started including live Zoom shows. So we'll do uh, short film blocks, uh, feature films, and, um, keep, um, and the shows are live. So after each um, short film we play, people uh, 
the filmmaker will zoom in and we'll do a Q&A with the audience. And uh, we get the, the audience members get to vote, take a poll, uh, vote on the film if they liked it or not, or a scale of one to five. And the filmmakers really appreciate that. They get to uh, share their film live with the live audience. And uh, yeah, it's actually really cool. I'm, I'm liking it that we're, uh, we're doing this. We're expanding on the festival, giving everybody a little chance to, uh, to get the feel of another hole in the head and what we have to offer. One title that stuck out to me was uh, from Saranosaurus Rex. It was uh, got a film called Saw in Order, which is all the Saw movies. I I'm, I'm, can't be all 10 hours of it, but it's like the, the Saw movies are out of order for anyone that doesn't know it. <laughs> they, uh, they retcon a lot of stuff in it. And from what I'm gathering, this man is putting all the timeline sequences in order, correct? Yes, correct. All right. All right. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. He, uh, I think a couple of years ago, he did um, Terminator, uh, the Terminator fan edit. And, uh, okay. Yeah, so he's doing this one's really good. We're, so that, we're going to play that one live on Zoom with, uh, with the QA with the director afterwards. Oh, far out. Yeah. Hmm. What else can folks look forward to on the uh, on demand platform? There's some films that are playing throughout the whole on demand from the first to the eighth day, and there's a couple that are uh, only doing limited engagement, like The mm -hmm. Creeping, uh, Cryptid, it's Five Days Only. All the shorts are playing, and the shorts are organized by short blocks. Mm -hmm. So, and the cool thing about the short blocks is whenever you view the film, you get to vote on the film after it's over and then you move on to the next and whenever you uh, rent a film you have 24 hours to view it it's a good way to do it because you're participating with the with the fest so any film that's playing on on demand is also part of the live festival because they get a chance to to win the uh, to to get votes to uh, for a chance to win an award at the end of the festival is there a short film that either of you guys favorite or can you can you even say that? No, we oh. love all of them. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Over the last 19 years, what has been the best movie to exhibit at the another hole in the head? Best? Um, mm -hmm. Knee jerk it's reaction. Hard. It's kind of hard to say because there's so many good ones. I mean, we've had, uh, you know, celebrities come until the festival has been kind of cool. Like we had, uh, Heather Leggen Camp from Nightmare on Elm Street. She did a documentary a couple of years ago, so she came out. We've had uh, Michael Bean from The Terminator. He did a film cool. called The Victim. He came out with his wife. Uh, that film did really well. Uh, we had uh, Barbara Crampton. We had a big, oh yeah, we had Mario Crampton come, and then uh, we had uh, a Bay Area guy uh, who made a film, The Black Devil Doll. Uh, that uh, actually did really. We played it four times, and uh, yeah, he has a t-shirt company out here in the Bay Area. He sells t-shirts. Uh, and then uh, I'm trying to think what else we played. That's been. Oh yeah, one of the member of uh, those for me was a uh, Machine Girl. Oh yes. Did you ever Japanese. see? That? What's Machine Girl? No, oh. I'm not familiar. Some kind of, it was a Japanese genre of uh, splatter house. Films. Okay. I, think, I think it was one of the first ones when that whole genre started that uh, came out and it went crazy and um, we were selling out the big rocks we had like five sold out shows of like 250 of 250 screening just people were lined up for that i think that was in what year was that 2008 you should check yeah, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know how it holds up anymore but it was a uh, it was great yeah that really stands out for me Another movie that stands out for me was uh, when we did uh, the new Mad Max, the last one that came out. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it. We played it silent and black and white with the live uh, with the live electronic uh, score. Oh, that had to be intense. That was really intense. We had two shows that sold out on that one, and that one got a lot of hype. A lot of other festivals, a lot of other uh, places wanted to uh, to play that film and have the experience. It was great. It was amazing. Yeah, my uh, to my friend uh, Marky Ray, he uh, set up his whole uh, electronic uh, D 
DJ and all his keyboards and everything, and they played. It was great. It was really uh, intense. People love that. I might be coming a little out of pocket here, but I'm really stuck about these these movies you guys do with the live score. So I'm just I'm just throwing this out there. I don't know how it would get arranged. I don't know if anyone listening to this goes like, I could do that. Highlander. Someone should do Highlander. <laughs> Lots of crickets here. Lots of crickets. That's okay, though. That's, That's okay. Well, you never know. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we did Fantasia as well. Just someone performing Queen all night long. Like, that would, <laughs> it would, I'm telling you guys, it'd work. It would work. Yeah, I'll look into that. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Now, George. <laughs> anyway. Guys, over 19 years, you guys have probably seen, if not everything, just about everything. But what's missing from the 19th annual Hole in the Head Festival? Like, what's that one? It was like, man, I really wish someone had done this or I wish someone had tried that. This gimmick again? Why have you tried it that way? Like, anything coming to mind? Like, something you saw like five years ago? Like, they should do more of that. Well, I remember, I think, I don't, what year was there? You played Serbian film? I forget the year. Like 2005, 2006, maybe. Or right yeah. No controversial films, and I, I miss that. There haven't been too many. And um, mm -hmm. I remember uh, we played a Serbian film. There's a couple of people that walked out of the theater. Well, some people walked out of the theater because it was uh, so intense. And um, yeah, it's, I haven't been really seeing too many things about. <laughs> The only, I guess the only controversial film that recently came out where people were coming out of walking out there was Terrifier 2. Mm. You know, I saw that. But yeah, well, that's what I think for me, that's what's missing from the festival, something controversial. How was the Terrifier 2? I saw it twice. It was amazing. Twice. I saw it, twice. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the goriest films I've probably ever seen. And how was the length for you? Because that's always a big criticism for me with every movie. I see like, eh, this could have been 15 minutes shorter. This could have been an hour shorter. Like terrifier Two, like came in over two hours. I want to say. Yeah. The, the, the other, I think it was about two hours. I mean, it was, it played for two and a half hours, but the last half hour was more like a, a behind the scenes documentary about it at the okay. end of the, yeah. The, the filmmakers are out there talking about the film showing behind the scenes. Yeah, it was a, it was a great film. You got to definitely catch it. It was a, uh, I was impressed. It it it, uh, it held. It, you know, it put up with the, the first one. It was it was uh, on par with the first one. You gotta definitely check it out. I had, I had to see it in the theater because uh, I like to see movies in the theater because I like when people start like laughing, like, laughing or yelling at the screen, you know, or getting grossed out. I enjoy doing that with the crowd, and that's why you know another reason why I like putting on this festival because of that. You know, having the whole audience experience together, and and the same thing with uh, with the live shows on Zoom. People um, are chatting during the film live chat while we're uh, oh. and everybody, yeah. So that's a uh, it's a really cool experience, it really is. Eric, uh, same question, man. Anything that's been missing from this festival that you just you wish they were doing more of or try? I don't know if things are missing. I'm glad to see uh, like go good ghost stories coming back because I know for a while like there weren't okay. really too many like true ghost story horror films, which I kind of like. So that's kind of making a comeback. Mm -hmm. We're seeing less of the uh, found footage, which is kind of nice. We had like tons of that for a while. It was all found footage, or so that's mm -hmm. starting to go away, which is kind of nice. Um, but no, I think we have, especially this year, a little bit of everything, a little diversity and stuff, you know. So I don't think anything's like truly missing. Okay. All right. Any movies that are not a part of the uh, festival that you're looking forward to? Like, this has been 2022 has been like a really good year for horror, like phenomenal year, even, you know, better than most. I saw, I guess, last week, weekend, I saw the menu. That was really good. Yeah, I enjoyed that, but something. I like the menu. Oh, you saw that? I did. I did. I, I, it was advertised as a horror movie, but it it jumps around, man. Like it's a dark comedy. There's there's some thrilling aspects of it. Obviously, being trapped on an island where you might be sautéed is yes, that's quite horrific. But <laughs> I wouldn't have called it a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. I guess well, I thought it would be, but yeah, you know, another movie I'm looking forward to is I guess I mean I, I'm, I'm Avatar too. 
I guess that's not a horror okay. film, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that. All right, so what do you think? Uh, tickets already? No, I'm not going to get tickets. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm sure it'll, it'll be fine. There are always going to be tickets. They, I, I live near the Metreon in San Francisco, so there'll be probably 16 theaters playing that film at the same time. It never really sells out. I could always get a ticket the same day. Eric, you were going to ask a question? Oh, what did you, I liked uh, what I just saw recently is uh, Barbarian. Barbarian is dope. Yeah. That was pretty no, Barbarian dope. is a movie that actually got like a visceral reaction for me. So when um when once his nuts throws the girl off the water tower, like I couldn't help but go, you fucking cunt. And the whole theater <laughs> laughed, and it was a great moment for everybody. That's great. <laughs> but like that that movie kept you guessing, it kept the, the suspense going. Lots of horrific stuff happening. I would absolutely call it a horror film, but it also, like, you know, it was different and it was nice to see. And again, it's one of those things like, like 2022 is a great year for these little indie horror films. Like, shit, even Smile was interesting. Oh, yeah. Like, that I just movie saw should that. have been dog shit. No, I saw that just now. That was actually really good. I thought it was going to be shitty. And I was, right? I, I, I waited so long and I saw it this weekend. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go see it. And my, my uh, two friends, we we went to go check it out, and we all thought the same thing was going to suck, and we were like, "Wow, this is really good." Yeah, it's just the ring, but you know, it's done really well, and yeah, sure. it kept your attention the entire time. It's just the right amount of time. Like, well done, well done yeah, with smile. Yeah, yeah. and then um, I also saw Nope. That was actually really good too. I, I enjoyed that all sci-fi right. horror. You, have you seen that? Yeah. I- Nope fell on that one weekend a year where I can't get to a movie theater. And then it. I just don't go back. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's that. dumb on my part, but that it happens every year. And it's always that last weekend in July for me. So like, I still haven't seen once upon a time in Hollywood and, and whatever else came out years prior on that, but that's all right. That's all right. Guys, it is black Friday as this drops. That means yesterday was Thanksgiving. So I know we're done with Thanksgiving and we're moving on to Christmas and the new years, but just for shits and giggles, what are you guys thankful for? I'm thankful for family, friends, and horror movies. There you go. Yeah, that's all you need. Eric. Yeah. I would for family, friends, and uh, I'd have to say really good horror movies and just good movies in general. Right. And uh, reconnecting with old acquaintances. There you go, man. I appreciate that. I myself, and I'm, I'm thankful for family also, thankful for friends, friends that I haven't seen in years, friends that are tolerating me to this day, friends that I have yet to meet. Uh, I'm thankful for the Bosnet family. I'm thankful for Mike Fish and the Waffle Box, Len Kabazinski and Jamil Hempel. Thankful for everyone that we have worked with and everyone that I work with on all the live productions I do. Um, I'm also thankful for the 19th Annual Hole in the Head Festival goes through December 1st all the way to the 18th. Again, tickets as cheap as $40. Get the all-access pass for $160. More information at anotherholeinthehead.com. A-H-I-T-H dot com. And then, hey, maybe you're still a fan of Twitter. Who knows? Maybe Twitter's not a thing after today. I don't know. But at A-H-I-T-H Film Fest. You still like the Facebook? Okay, Boomer. You can find that at A-H-I-T-H <laughs> And then on Instagram, another hole in the head. Guys, is there anything I've been missing? Is there anything you need to talk about just before we go? No, you hit every note. Thank you. We really do appreciate you uh, uh, putting this together. Thank you. Wow, yes, you thank you. Here. Guys, for Eric Ringer, for George Cascalet, I've been Cushes, you've been you. <laughs> From the Bosnet family. Oh my God, that's just a midget in a wig.